NASCAR president Steve Phelps just doesn't get it. NASCAR president Steve Phelps on Monday spoke to a webinar of industry members and once again kind of reiterated what most fans already think of him. It's that he's a bit of a Muppet. The guy doesn't really understand racing and he constantly says things where you're like, that's really dumb. We probably shouldn't do that or we should at least do whatever you said. Let's do the opposite of that. I mean, the guy famously called the Gen 7 the next gen car the panacea. I mean, that would fix all of NASCAR's problems and it certainly hasn't done that. It's made short tracks worse, road courses worse, super speedways are pretty good and intermediates are actually really good for a car that was intended to race on road courses. Makes sense of that one. And now speaking on Monday, the topic of how to improve the show, the on-track product came up. And obviously when any time this comes up, fans are always like, we need more horsepower. And I made a video on the same topic. What's one thing you could change about the Gen 7 car? And a lot of people, everyone included, basically says, it either needs more horsepower or you need to get rid of the transaxle slash gearing issues so that they can't shift on short tracks or get a narrower tire. That's kind of the three big ones and they all kind of are interchanged with one another, but horsepower does seem to be that sticking point, which not that it's the end all be all of everything, but it can certainly solve a lot more of your problems if you can only fix one than having to fix multiple of them. So when the topic of horsepower was brought up, and remember, back at the state of the sport at Phoenix for the championship finale uh, earlier this month, Steve Phelps and Steve O'Donnell were up on the dais and they both said that they're open to any type of changes, including increasing horsepower, but that wasn't their focus because let's be honest, it's never their focus. So when the topic was brought up on Monday during this webinar, Steve Phelps had this to say, and I'm going to quote it, that way I actually get it correct. I don't think the answer is more horsepower because more horsepower is expensive. If you ask a driver what's going to solve it, they're always going to say, give me more horsepower. It's a thing. I'm not a driver, but I've listened to enough drivers and that's their solution. So the question is really, what is? I don't know. I think there's some gearing things that we're looking at as well and some shifting things, end quote. <sighs> Increasing horsepower is never their answer. And it's really unfortunate because the thing that made this car race so well on intermediates was increasing horsepower. This guy just does not get it. And he even says right there, I think the funniest part of this, in one breath, he says, I'm not a driver. And then the next breath, he says, I talked to a bunch of drivers. They say to do this. I'm not going to do it. It makes no sense to me. Then why even ask their opinion? It's like going to a tire shop, seeing a guy using a, a socket wrench to take off the lugs and being like, hey, what would make your job better? And he's like, I'd love it if I had an impact wrench. And you said, that's funny. Keep using that socket wrench and then just walking away. It's like, why did you even ask him? It makes no sense. And that's basically what Steve Phelps is doing here. All the drivers are like, hey, give us more horsepower. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. That's a good idea, but think of something else. And it, is it really that much more expensive? NASCAR started this trend towards less horsepower. Back around 2015, 2016, they started to dabble with this idea of a tapered spacer and then how to restrict the horsepower on these cars before eventually settling on that N18D package, which we saw run in 2019 and 2020, which is a high downforce, low horsepower, everybody try to pack race, just hold your foot to the floor type of package that nobody really liked. NASCAR, in their infinite wisdom, thinks that limiting the cars to 550 horsepower will, you know, attract a bunch of new OEMs that are just going to come banging on the door saying, we need to get into this because you only have 550 horsepower. That fits in with our brand model. You know how many people have come and knocked on the door since then? Zero. But that doesn't have to stop the brain trust from being like, we need to keep limiting horsepower, which is funny because back when they first started doing the Gen 7 testing and all the cars rolled off uh, to test at Charlotte, there was a 550 horsepower package in the car, and according to Kevin Harvick and basically every person that was there driving it, all the cars were turds. Couldn't pass anybody, there wasn't enough power, and everybody just kind of rode around together. So then when Harvick's team put 670 horsepower into the car, different tapered spacer, the car took off, and it raced really well, and handled really well, and it made the racing, like we've seen on intermediates, be as good as it is. So you would think, just by doing a little math here, like we went from 550, we went to 670, that's 120 horsepower, and it started to race really well. What happens if we would go from 670 to 800 horsepower? How well would it race then? And the current cup engines can easily do 800 horsepower, right? They have a tapered spacer on them. It's still the same general design that we've always had, and the parts are still pretty much the same parts. You would certainly need some new parts in there just because the current parts aren't rated or, you know, designed to last at 800 horsepower. So that's something that could be done. And Doug Yates has talked about that as well. And basically they're all going to need like a 12 month lead time to get more horsepower into these cars. And that's something that can easily be done. I just don't know why they are have such this refusal to, to do what most people are saying to do. And 
NASCAR is going to go and they're going to do this test at Phoenix next week, and they're going to try out different gearing. So maybe we can limit shifting. A narrow tire would do a lot of good. They're not going to look at that. They'll look at maybe doing something with the underbody, maybe taking a little bit more downforce off the car, when in reality, like, if you would just let them build engines here, it would be a lot better, more than likely. It's at least something that's worth trialing. Instead of this whole notion of having to take horsepower away, maybe we give some back to see what can happen here, and it, it can increase the show. Because at the end of the day, you don't have any new OEMs coming and knocking on the door. Honda dabbled a little bit, and they're like, eh, probably not. Nissan's not interested. Kia, Hyundai, not interested. Dodge is like, we don't actually know what we're doing here. We're building V6s now, so who, who knows? Actually, sorry, inline sixes. Now, and Volkswagen might not even be a brand by the end of 2025. Who even knows? So there's not like there's a big influx of car manufacturers wanting to get into NASCAR. And right now, we have three manufacturers, and all three of them do a really good job. Two of them are interested in horsepower, and then one of them has been a champion for decreasing horsepower since about that 2014 to 2016 period right there. And it's really unfortunate. Right? So hopefully we can see maybe an increase in horsepower, but Steve Phelps, He's the face of NASCAR right now, right? At least of their leadership group. Jim France is the CEO. He kind of sits in the back, and he's not really that visible. He's more interested in the IMSA side of things, which is fine, except his IMSA brain is hurting the NASCAR brand. It's a different story. But for Steve Phelps, he's the Gary Bettman right now of NASCAR. And anytime he comes out and speaks, you're like, oh, my God. Please don't let him say something stupid. And then he comes out and he's like, we like what we're seeing. And then it's like, well, we had 19 on-track passes. So what what do you like that we see here? One guy led 470 laps at Martinsville out of 500. And you're like, it's going in the right direction. What is happening here? It makes no sense. We're living in bizarro world. Just give them more horsepower. And Steve Phelps, hopefully, maybe at some point, can transition out of his role in NASCAR. And I'm not saying that you need a motorsport guy to come in and lead the sport, but it would certainly help if you had that, right? Even for Formula One, as much as we complain about some of the dumb decisions that they make, at least the heads of Formula One, Formula One that is, not the FIA, traditionally have some sort of background within a team, within a manufacturer, something that along the lines of motorsports so that they have an idea what happens when they come in here. I mean, we went from Ross Braun and then we just went to Stefano Domenicali. Granted, before that we had Chase Carey, who was kind of the face of things and not necessarily a motorsport guy, but in the grand scheme of things, it works out pretty well to have people that have been in these positions uh, within the sport then you know transition into a leadership role. And whether that's a Dale Jr. or somebody else, I, Dale Jr. is too big of a name, but I'm just throwing this out there for the sake of comparison. That's something that you need. Somebody that understands how the sport works, how the cars work, how the engineering side of it works. You need all of that. And unfortunately, Steve Phelps just doesn't have that. And I don't necessarily know NASCAR is heading in the right direction with him at the helm. But like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Raycard, Instagram and Twitter at Raycard Blog.